Okay, so our last speaker today is going to be Ben Radford. I'm going to let him go and just tell us all sorts of stuff. There are still magazines in the back. Take them to your chiropractor's office. Um, yeah. Just kind of leave them at the, at the, at the acupuncturist. Uh, this is on stem cells, so make sure you leave it someplace where you can think that that would have the most impact. So, uh, you know, spread this around, leave it some doctor's waiting room someplace, but uh, please go ahead and take these and the food home. And lastly, we're going to be talking to, one more time, Ben Radford, who's going to be talking to us about fake news, some of his favorite cases. Um, there's some really great stuff inside his books we use a lot of his articles that he's written for Wikipedia. So some things you're going to find on Wikipedia are are uh, on these strange and weird things are things that my team has actually left on Wikipedia for you to find. Because just like Kyle said, there's there's not a lot of uh, writing being done on a lot of these things. So do I need a spell sterling? Do I need a dance or something while you're just doing this? Dun, da, dun, 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 dun. No, he's doing something. Um, what about those water cups? Oh, so that was homeopathy over there. What I, what I meant was I took the big pitcher, get it, the big pitcher, and, and you're supposed to put one drop of blue dye in there, and then what homeopathy does, and this is very simplistic, is they take a very minute amount, let's say an eyedropper uh, drop, and put it in cup one. There you go, Jay's got an eyedropper. And you put it in cup one. And then you, you, you uh, what's the word for it? It starts with an S. Succus. Succus, yeah, it's BS. But yeah, they have certain ways of like you stir it to the right so many times or the left. Each homeopath has a different kind of system. Some people use a Bible and they hit it on the side. Some people jiggle it with, I don't know, there's, there's all kinds of different ways of doing it. And then after they've done that with that cup, they take one drop out of that cup of water and put it into the next cup, do the same thing over, and they do it 30 times which is why it's called 30C, 30 and there's a C after it. That's how many times it's been diluted. So when you're at your very, very, very last cup, um, you should have, uh, then they take out a, 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 a drop, and I'm saying a drop, and actually they do quite a bit less than a drop. They put it on a sugar pill, or they put it in some kind of uh, method to give it to you. And the idea is, is that the, uh, the memory, the water has memory, and that it remembers throughout those 30 times you've done that. And what it's saying is that its potency is actually expanded even though you diluted it to nothing. And on the, on the poster I have written down that I think that you would have to have, what does it say, Jay, about the, the, all the water in the universe or something like that for it to actually have anything. It's like, it's like putting a drop in the ocean and then, um, then taking a, a bit of the ocean and that's supposed to be it is stupid. It's just I anyway. Not so that the substances they put in the water are like syphilis pus. Syphilis pus, yeah, that's yeah, and it's, it's if you if you think about it, it's everything. Dinosaur pee or Julius Caesar, you know, urinating in the river or something. You you got it. James? Well, I just want to make a point. The, the idea that water has memory probably has something to do with a lot of people having a revulsion about drinking uh, urine, uh, that uh, urine water that's been distilled. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like on the space station, all the news media going, oh, the space station, they're drinking their own pee. Well, but yeah, what do you want? I was thirsty, I had a glass, and I just drink dinosaur pee. Yeah, maybe. I think I have some Peladona in there. No, I'm so sorry. Nice. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. You had your next to Ken. Did you fill out your little slip when you came in? Okay, I'm just checking. So we're ready? Okay, so I think he's going to be throwing up a, 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 he's not sure which PowerPoint he's doing. I'm voting for ghost porn, which actually I saw Ben do in uh, Dragon Con. It is on here, he said. It is not PG. It is not PG. Uh, but no, he's not going to be doing it here in this thing. That's, that's for an adult audience, else, I guess. I don't know, but that's embarrassing. Well, I'm sorry, Tom. I'm sorry. I'm just looking disappointed. You. You'll have to have my question. <laughs> and it is. It, we'll just close the doors. No, you have to sign waivers. But it is really not ghost having Ghost sex. porn. It's ghost not. porn. Ghost no, no, porn. No, no. no, we want to do another skeptic camp. And this is all being recorded. Okay, so I welcome to the stage. 
One more time, and last speaker of the night, Ben Radford. Thank you, thank you all. Thank you, Susan. Um, yeah, so uh, I I had originally, uh, on as the schedule originally says, it says Ben Radford favorite cases. Uh, I'm Ben Radford, of course. The favorite cases was originally the topic that she and I were going to talk about. Now, I can do that, uh, but I thought that I would actually uh, open it up, and, and, and I have another thing that I can also talk about that may actually be more relevant and more important these days, but it's, it's you're the audience, uh, I will be your trained monkey, such as it was. So, here's what we can do. We've got, I'm going to try to try to end, um, I'm not drone on too long, and so see if we can get out of here about on time. So I can do one of two things. I can either um, go over s several of my uh, best known favorite cases. Uh, and if you want to hear about my Chupacabra investigation, I'm world famous for that one. I can talk about uh, behind the scenes on a, on a, a ghost television show. Lots of weird things going on there. Um, uh, what we can do the ghost porn. I mean, there's just no shortage of phantom. I have phantom clown panics. Um, I mean, I've got two dozen absurdly, ridiculously talented, wonderful presentations I can give you. Someone say born? <laughs> <laughs> and on cue, there's Brian. Um, so I, I can do that, and or I can also discuss um, uh, parsing fake news. Uh, one of my books is, uh, is titled Media Mythmakers. It came out in uh, 2003, and I've done several books on, on the media. Uh, and uh, so I can I can talk about more of that. So um, I'm going to leave it up to whatever you want here. Do you, would you guys? Now I can also I can also uh, the other option would be I can talk about half hour on uh, fake news and media criticism, and then with time left over do a Q and A or one of my other talks. What do you guys want? Oh, fake news. Fake news. Okay. Well, here's what, so okay so. No, that's fine. Yeah. He's, 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 he's checking out the, the porn, of course. Um, no, he's not. He's not. Um, okay, so here's yeah. So so I'll uh, I'm gonna, I'll give a give a talk on uh, on on fake news criticism. Don't worry about it now. Uh, and if you have got time left over, then I'll I'll run through that. Is there a truck angle for that? Ooh, yeah. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Um. So yeah, um, as I mentioned, um, among among the, my uh, the, uh, the the bailiwicks that I have, again, the, there's the, the sort of the weird stuff, uh, ghosts, chupacabras, uh, lake monsters, uh, this and that. And but then I, I occasionally sort of get niche as like, oh, you're the Bigfoot guy. It's like, all right, fine, yeah, I'm I've done Bigfoot stuff, and I've also been published in medical journals. Um, I, I've actually done quite a bit with myself. Thank you very much. I'm not just the Bigfoot guy. Um, I don't mind, uh, and this is one of the interesting, uh, one of the passes that I, that I have to sort of tread, because on one hand, because I do speak about these weird topics, uh, it's easy for people uh, to sort of, oh, like, oh, he's talking big, he's talking ghosts, it must be all, he must be crazy. He's like, no, 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 I'm, I'm talking about, I'm bringing the, the skeptical side. But of course, you have to talk to people before they really get that. It's like, no, 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 I'm, I'm more... I'm bringing the science to it, which is, of course, what most people don't do. But I also bring in the academic side. So I, I try to blend, again, folklore and journalistic traditions and references and stuff. Um, and I mentioned references because uh, most of the, uh, probably 90% of the, the, the books and paranormal topics I have on my shelf, they're not academic, they're not scholarly, they've never seen a reference list, they, I don't even think they're going to alphabetize. Um, and, and I pride myself on, on bringing a, a journalistic tradition to that. But again, the other, the other, another part of what I do is, is media criticism. So um, I am going to talk some about this. So I, I did mention earlier about the, the problem of, of, um, of news and sensationalism at the end of my, the end of my last talk. And um, especially over the past, I'm going to say two or three months, of course, fake news has been a, a, a popular topic of concern uh, to be run the, the, the Trump administration. Uh, and, um, and, you know, you've got the, probably the, the, there's many, many examples of it, of course, but probably the most famous recent one was the Pizzagate story, uh, which I'm sure many of you heard about, where there was a, a rumor circulating online 
that there was a DC area pizza place that was actually in front for a Clinton affiliated pedophile ring. <laughs> yeah. Um, so this got circulated, and somebody who read this went in armed with a uh, weapon. And uh, no one was injured, uh, as I recall. But the fact that someone went into a police. But what was interesting about this is, um, and I'll, I'll, I'll come back to this a little bit later on is that many of these stories, the reason they gain traction is because of do-gooders. That is, these are people who believe they're doing good. It's, it's, the, same, it's the same, I talked earlier about the fervor that, that I see and other people see with, with conspiracy theorists. And part of the reason they get so pissed off at me and on other people who debunk these conspiracy theories is because they see me as the enemy. They see me as somebody who is trying to obfuscate the truth and somebody who is trying to make sure that other people don't know what's going on. And you saw this in the case of the, the Pizzagate guy. I mean, he, <laughs> bad, badly mistakenly, but somewhere deep and down inside, he thought he was going to go into this pizza place and save these children. I mean, that was, you, you can dress it up however you want, that, he thought he was doing good. Uh, he, he's like, hey, yo, oh my God, there's this pedophile ring, I'm going to go in there, and I'm going to figure out what's going on, I'm going to blow the lid off this, and I'm going to you know, find, find out what's going on. And you can certainly criticize him, as he should be criticized, for, for believing this and, and on all sorts of levels. But I think it's important to recognize that in his mind, he was doing good. He thought he was protecting children. And that is the, that's one reason, not, again, I'll come back to say that, but that's one reason why so many of these viral news stories go around, is that there's this element of like, oh, so I'm, 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 I'm improving things, I'm, you know, social justice, like, like, share, this is, uh, this is an outrage, we need to stop this, everyone needs to get upset about this. And that, that, that mentality helps to, to, uh, to fuel it. So I want to talk a little bit about uh, parsing out fake news. Um, and because it's the, the, the phrase is thrown around quite a bit, particularly, again, in the past few months, uh, and I actually wrote a blog about this about a week or so ago um, on the Center for Inquiry blogs. I'm not going to go over the whole thing. I just want to sort of touch on it because I see it tossed around a lot as if, as, if, as if fake news is universally acknowledged in terms of what it means. In fact, it's not. Um, and you know, it's important to recognize, of course, that, that there's nothing new about fake news per se depending on how you define it. If you're just talking about bad journalism, <laughs> well, shit, nothing new about that. There's been bad journalism for, for centuries, as long as there has been journalism. You can look at you know, the yellow journalism uh, in the 1800s and 1920s. Um, you know, I, in the course of my researching other topics, I often come across somebody who will say, oh, well, you know, according to this, this really sensational news story, like 1897 in some New York newspaper, I'm like, Oh, the, the, the one talking about the Batman on the moon, that one? Oh yeah, yes, yes, it is a reputable newspaper. It's obviously, it's obviously a, a, a sensational story. So when you go back and you look at, at stories, you, some of the worst ones seem like 1870s, 1920s. They, they're filled with stuff, just, they just made it up. There's no, it's just, it's pure fiction being put on the front page of the newspaper. Why? To sell newspapers, guys. There's, there's no mystery here, uh, and so, so again, yeah, there's, there's nothing new about this, and so it, it always sort of amuses me when people suggest that like <laughs> this sort of bad journalism is something new. It's like there's nothing new about it at all, and, and even I mean, uh, you know, the the uh, even the uh, the uh, really virulent um, uh, political smears. Uh, you know, you think the stuff today is nasty, you should have seen the stuff going around in Washington this time, and <laughs> Hamilton, I mean, this is, you know, it's, 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 uh, it's, it's always been there, it just sort of comes and goes, but, so, anyway, I wanted to, um, I wanted to hit on some of the, um, some of the aspects that make up what's called fake news, uh, because fake news is kind of, it, it's so general and generic, it doesn't mean anything. What, what is fake? Uh, let me. What do you What do you guys think fake news is? Give me some definitions. Made up news. Made up news. Okay. So does that mean that somebody? Does that mean that someone made something up and it was reported as news, or do you mean something that a journalist intentionally created as fake news? What do you think? It seems like 
this go-round, it has taken on a specific meaning of being that which is to <coughs> go for a specific goal. You know, it's a new something for a specific goal. Why would you think? Well, there's websites that were purposely done it's fake news to get more clicks to make more money. Okay. Get more clicks on uh, Trump stuff. Okay, what else? There's also satirical news sites that then get cited as news and then propagated or perpetuated in that way. Mr. Green? Um, yeah, to expand on what she just said, I mean, there's a difference between something The Onion puts out and something InfoWars puts out. Uh, Onion is, is, its purpose you know, in these false stories are to satirize or amuse. Breitbart and Infowars and places like that, their purpose is to deceive, uh, where they make up just out of nowhere uh, Hillary Clinton and uh, Barack right. Obama are lovers. Right. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to touch on that. I, I just wanted to sort of throw it out there so that people can see that, again, I mean, even in this room, we've got four or five different Do real quick? Yeah. Yes, one thing I've been seeing lately is uh, new, real news sites that will. They will take one little tiny incident, which is actually something that happened, and then make a very sensational headline about it, and then write a bunch of stuff that's just conjecture about the motivations of the people, or all kinds of stuff that's just kind of like, yeah, okay, yeah, one little thing happened, and then. Sure, and then the nugget goes out there. Yeah, and so I mean, uh, the the things you're coming up with, all that is, uh, all uh, all those things, I think, are fake news, and that that's that's my point. Is that is that it's such a broad umbrella that it's like, in fact, it's uh, in, in my book, Media Myth Makers, I point out that when that when I hear people complaining about the media, the media does this, the media does that, the media doesn't do anything. The the media, as the phrase is used, covers everything from from CNN to Playboy magazine to to some fanzine, to a blog. I mean, there, there is there is no collective homogenous the media. Well, it, it's a collective. Well, let me finish. Like well, no, it, it's it's a it's it's a the media. All that means is is a is a, a publication of some sort. It could be it could be a magazine. It could be, it, it, the point. My point is that like fake news, blaming the media is pointless. If if you if you're complaining that that CNN did something. Then CNN did something. If you're complaining that, that Fox News is, is, is twisting things, then you complain about Fox News. But complaining that the media does this, it, that's meaningless. It, the media doesn't do anything. You, you talk about specific ones. But anyway, let, me, let me go on. So, so one of the, and I'm, again, I just sort of want to parse it out a little bit, sort of, because it, it's useful to, to, to understand some of the different aspects of me and, and recognize that they don't always have a, a common cause. So one of the, I'll just begin, I'll just go through these pretty quick. One of them uh, is rumors, of course. Rumors circulate widely, and we now, you know, the, rumor has, a, has several different definitions, of course. Uh, from a folkloric point of view, rumor has a very specific narrative definition, but in pop culture, it's basically talk or opinion widely disseminated with no discernible source. Like we, we hear something, and who said that? Well, you know, who knows? Of course, the problem is that, that the, the, the veracity of the source uh, in knowing, knowing who said it, where it came from, is crucial to understanding how credible it is, right? Did this, did this come from Obama's White House? Did it come from my cousin's, my cousin's gardener's, you know, boyfriend? I mean, but I don't know. If you don't know where the source came from, there's no way to judge, uh, judge its, 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 its validity. And of course, in some cases, rumors turn out to be true, but until they're established as valid, or at least given credence by some, some reputable rules organization or fact organization, they should be treated with agnosticism or, or, and, and not acted upon because, because again, we, all you know is someone said X. Well, Trump would say a lot of people are saying it. Right, yeah, yeah, and, and that's right, and, and it's, it's, all, it's the they. They say this, they say that. Well, that doesn't mean anything. They, who's they? Society. Right, society says, and, and again, society doesn't say anything. So certain people in society say something. So, you know, the media says, I, I tune out as soon as I hear that, because you know what you're talking about. The media doesn't say anything. If you're talking about one official, one person, one news organization, one journalist, then call them out on it. But, but, you know, the, but blaming the media is, is not only pointless, it also diffuses responsibility. Because if you're pissed off that a journalist did something wrong, then saying the media does, no, that, no, you call out the journalist by name, say, you know, you, you screwed this up, you got this fact wrong, 
Put them out of money, that way they can be all accountable. Otherwise, it's like, the world sucks! Okay, and, well, just the world sucks. Well, you're just ranting to yourself. You're not doing any good. So rumors, and then there's also urban legends. And, and again, this is, I, I, as, as I think uh, Susan mentioned earlier, one of the things I've done in the past, I've written for Snopes, uh, which has recently gotten much more publicity since, since uh, it's, it's been called the fun fact check. But I've, I've done, I don't know, about a dozen or so articles for Snopes. Um, and they began as the urban legend debunking website. Um, but what's interesting is that, is that from a folkloric point of view, folklorists uh, per se aren't really that interested in the truth of urban legends. Uh, I am because I sort of straddle investigator with, with folklorists. But, but, but in terms of you know, trying, to, trying to say, you know, is, is a rumor true? Um, a lot of folklorists will sort of look at you funny because that's, that's not the angle that, with which they approach it. They're, they approach it what how does it function in society? How does it benefit the teller? How has how, how that story changed? How has that rumor changed depending on location and, and, and point of view? So there's an interesting agnosticism in folklore uh, that I keep meaning to write about because I don't have any time, but at some point I'll write an article about, the, about that. But, um, uh, but, but from a skeptical point of view and from a media criticism point of view, you do want to find out what's true and what's not. It's not enough to just say, well, you know, this rumor circulating about a pedophile ring and, and a pizza, you know, we don't know if it's true or not. Well, if you're going to report it, you should find that out because it, it may influence people. Uh, and Snopes, uh, although initially associated with describing and cataloging urban legends, uh, long ago expanded far beyond that. Um, and, you know, I, I, I sort of wince a little bit when I hear popular, when I hear, when I hear the phrase urban legend in pop culture, because a lot of so-called urban legends aren't urban legends at all. From a folklore point of view, urban legends have a very specific meaning, they have a certain narrative, they have a, there's, there's, a, there's a rhythm to them, there's usually a twist ending. Urban legends mean something to a folklorist than they do to random people on the internet, and so I sort of wince a bit, but, you know, that gene's out of the bottle. So we have rumors, urban legends, and then of course there's also mixed in with this. There's also just speculation, right? And there's nothing wrong with speculation. You know, an event happens. Trump is elected. Uh, a building falls down. There's a shooting, right? And people speculate. What does this mean? Where, how, how, what, what is going to be the reaction to this? Is this the beginning of something else? So there's nothing inherently wrong with speculation because that's that's what people do. Pundits and lay people comment on the bits of the day and wonder what the repercussions might be, everything from a new policy to an increase in interest rates, what have you. Invariably, much of the conjecture turns out to be wrong. Why? Because uh, humans are very poor, generally, at predicting the future. There's, there's so many aspects in the world that, that I mean, there's so many different variables and you know, cultural trends and, and economic things. Um, humans' uh, predictions are based on a set of assumptions about underlying circumstances, and those circumstances are continually changing. That's not to say that, that all production, all predictions are useless, but, the, but it shouldn't surprise anyone that when, when pundits make, pr make predictions about what's going to happen, oftentimes they're just flat out wrong. Uh, they do their best, but we're only human, we can only go by the information available at the time, and those things change. Um, and of course, oftentimes those commenting on a situation, the news media have social, economic, and or political agendas. They color their perceptions, right? So if you if you if you uh, see a, a uh, an economist being interviewed on NPR uh, talking about some the latest thing that you know the Obama administration did and, and how it's going to lead to to uh, to another uh, stock market crash, and you hear another economist being interviewed on CNN or, or NPR. Uh, or Fox News, then it, it, it's gonna. Their agenda is gonna co be coloring their uh, their predictions, and of course, almost always in the in the uh, in the direction of dire consequences. Right? If, if you're an expert, you're being interviewed. You're you're very you're m more, much more likely to predict something bad's gonna happen or something great's gonna happen. Right? They, if, if you're being on camera, oh my God, this just happened. You know, is everything gonna be fine? It's like. Yeah, everything will stay pretty much the same. You don't get airtime. You're not. They don't. They don't want to hear things are going to be okay. They don't want to think it's like, oh my God, we're all going to die. This is the beginning of the end. Blah blah. blah. Or they want to hear, uh, oh yes, this is a wonderful. 
the best thing since sliced bread, and you know, so so, and I'll be talking more about this in a second. But there's there's inherent news bias in news gathering, uh, in which the the, uh, the the people, the experts that are most extreme, get the most airtime. That's that, that's who people want to hear from. And in addition to speculation, there's also speculation, as I mentioned, that turns out to be false. And there's not so much, uh, again, all under the, um, under the uh, rubric of, of, uh, of, uh, of fake news. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with, fa with false uh, predictions, because we all make predictions, and as I mentioned, often of them uh, turn out to be wrong. The problem is when, when predictions uh, are not revisited, as most of the time they're not, right? So someone makes a prediction, this is going to happen, and very rarely does someone go back and say, you know, um, back in 2009, you predicted this horrific thing, and that never happened, so can you explain that? That, that rarely happens. It only happens, uh, for example, if there's, if there's someone with a vested interest in the opposite side. For example, a political rival, right? They'll get and yell like, well, you know, you, you predicted this and this and this, and that was all wrong. Or if there's, you know, somebody from 60 Minutes or some other news organization that has a desire to dig deeper and to sort of pull out the contradictions and, and, and force them to, to, to acknowledge and explain them. Unless that happens, you know, things go on, move, people move on, people, nobody wants to go back and, and talk about, ooh, can we talk about your failed predictions? No, I'm busy. <laughs> nobody wants to go back and, and accept responsibility for their failed predictions. Um, and, and this all sort of ties back in again with, with the fake news because when you do research and, and, and you, you go on the internet, you find that there's all these predictions that some, some are true and some weren't true, and, and people will pick and choose, they'll cherry pick, well, this person said this, this person said that. And of course, you can go back and say, well, you're cherry picking because that will either turn out to be false and this and that. But again, it's not, the, 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 misinf the, the misinformation remains there. In, in, I mean, there, there's, there's no function on the internet that goes back and removes bad information. <laughs> God, can you imagine that? how you sold that would be, right? Like, oh, well, this turned out to be wrong. There's not some computer program that deletes that, so that that, that can't be uh, can't be uh, used uh, to, uh, to to line up with a faulty argument. Then, of course, there's uh, infotainment infomercials. Um, you know, like Larry King shilling fish oil. I think he's still alive. I don't know. I, I haven't seen Larry King in decades. I, I assume he's dead. But if he's not dead, sorry, Larry. Uh, but I, you know, and when you have a news format, and of course they're, they're pitching some, some advertisement uh, in, in, the, in the format of a, of a news. And now, to be fair, most media savvy people recognize that as, I mean, I'm not, not trying to suggest that this is a huge problem uh, in terms of people thinking that Larry King is actually about to, you know, get a Nobel Prize for his breakthroughs in fish oil and uh, making people live to be 150, uh, as Larry is. Um, but, um, but, you know, so most people see right through this. On the other hand, you know, it, it, is, it is another form of, of, uh, of, the, of the problem. Oh, when doctors do it, it's less clear. Right, right. Yeah, it, yeah, certainly. And then you can get into, you know, who's funding studies. And, I mean, there's all sorts of different spin-offs there. Then, of course, um, as I mentioned earlier, there's also satire and fake news. So the, the original students, like, for example, uh, the Onion click hole, I mean, the, you, you have these that, that literally are fake news. I mean, they're, they're meant as satirical uh, news headlines. You know, the area man, you know, stumbles over. <laughs> it's just, the area man's always similar, right? Um, and these are about real people, often, you know, prominent people. You know, Obama does something, Trump does something, this and that. And they're written in an absurdist fashion, of course, for humans to fact. Um, and there's nothing inherently wrong with that. I mean, satire is, it's humor and satire are an important part of a functioning democracy. The problem is, of course, that, uh, you know, if, if someone sends something to me that says the onion on it, then we all know, we, we know what that is. But there are lots of spin-offs and, 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 you know, sort of B-grade imitators uh, whose agendas are much more murky. It's not always so clear exactly what's, what's meant to be satirical and what's not. Um, and then, uh, also I touched on this a little and this is not meant to be a comprehensive list, I'm not suggesting this, and there, there's lots of overlap in this, I just want to sort of parse out some of the parts of that of fake news. So, in addition to that, there's also the, the problem of viral outrage, right? In a world that often seems awash with genuine social problems, many people share stories directly from others on social media. And so, 
it, it, this is this is important to recognize because the, the news isn't coming from CNN through a friend. The news is coming from another content provider, usually like you know some some blogger somewhere else. So, so the news is not being filtered through uh, through any sort of reputable um, news organization. And of course, you know the, that was one of the promises of the internet: the global connectedness, uh, unimaginable just a few decades ago. I mean, who who knew that you know? In you know, in, in, in the last 20 years, to be able to communicate instantly with anyone around the world with the internet connection and exchange ideas, good and bad, and rumors, and I mean, it's just it's just astonishing. And there there's there's definitely a great promise to that, but there's also a darker side, of course, because rumors and bad information flow more freely than ever, and it also leaves the public more vulnerable than ever to bogus news. So you have a public that's primed to flag offensive behavior and share their outrage in social media. And, uh, and so you have all sorts of uh, you know people who are who are sharing social media hoaxes, and it's just it's just a, they're just bounces all over the place. And and again, as I said before, you know people want to be part of the, the solution. I, I mentioned the, the the Pizzagate guy who felt he was doing some good by going in there and helping the helping the the, the, the break break up the pedophile ring. And and whenever you see these stories, particularly these social social outrage stories, you know. This is an outrage. We need to stop this. You know, share it around. Those are ready-made to be shared. There's a reason why they're so popular. It's because people want to participate. They want to feel like they're doing good by hitting like and hitting hitting share, and that makes these these things go all all, all further. So, um, I I want to touch briefly on on some of the uh, some of the solutions, um, and, and and hit on a couple of the news biases that are sort of. I'll get to you. I need I need to finish up. We're, we're running out of time. Here. Um, you know, one of the problems that, is that, that there is, in, in my book, Media Myth Makers, I talk about um, the, the tendency towards sensationalism. And again, this is nothing new, I mentioned that before. But there's, there's, there's a news bias that is inherent in the news gathering process. And that is one in which, um, as I mentioned, the, the most extreme, the most dramatic stories make the news, right? If it's something, something